Alrighty, let's do a video. Using Centaurus Workbench to simulate a silicon solar cell. So, uh, log into your Linux station of choice and start a terminal. Ready, set the seashell and change into your EE221 directory that you created before, or create a brand new directory and just keep track of it. Then there's the things that you had done before. Now we have to set up the environmental variables, and I'm just going to do T wildcard CHS, that's the wildcard symbol. And it, you know, everything and anything in between. Okay. And then we just get the software going with software, uh, Centaurus Workbench. Ampersand releases it. And it's going to ask you to set your database. Um, I'm going to keep it in EE221, but again, you can use another directory. Press OK. And this is what you have. You, um, Your information will be different here, and you won't have this already available, or you, and you won't have a temp. So I want you to copy a project, which is called Solar Cell. Uh, EE221. So click on solar and double click, and you can see here's the project. Now you you can't run it from here. You have to save it in your own directory. So save as. Don't save it as project. Save it as clean project. And Linux is uh, case sensitive, so I'm just going to type solar cell all lowercase and this is a clean project nothing has run now if when you do this you see something like this where where uh, you have these yellow blocks that means it's run and these are the extracted values I'll tell you what to do before you move on so here I have I copied the project, right? Um, all you have to do is go to Project, Operations, Cleanup, and everything should work. For, to run everything here, Project, Operations, Run. I like to click All. Um, concurrency mode, local default, um, local priority. Let's do that. Okay. And hopefully it all works. Yeah, there we go. So I'm just going to close this. So these are the five, these are the tools. It's going to run uh, structure editor and it's going to make the structure. If we edit the input command, it's creating the N box, the P box, which is the N type region, the P type region, a bottom contact, a top contact, an anti reflective coating. It's going to put the doping in. And anything in between the at sign is going to be a variable. You don't have to edit this at all, it's provided for you. If now that it's it's uh, yellow, right? If it was red, it, it didn't it wouldn't have passed. You just double click on it, and all the files that it generates for that node are there. So you can click on the mesh .tdr and just double click on it, double left click, and Visual will come right up. And what you see here is something a thousand microns long. Um, and 
what five microns for the n region and five microns for the p region let's just zoom in a little bit and there's the i'm going to try to zoom in even a little more so the aluminum width or, or height is set to a thousand angstroms or 0.1 all right, this brown area is silicon dioxide. It's the anti-reflective coating, which it's a variable, and I set that to 0.1 micron as well. You can control how wide this aluminum contact on the front is. It's called W front. You can control how wide the whole structure is with uh, W. And the N region is controlled by DN. That's from here to here. It's five microns. That's where the junction is as well. And then you can put in the P region with uh, DP. DP would be actually the substrate thickness. It'd usually be a lot thicker than that. If you want to think about it, we're, we put aluminum on, on a substrate, grew five microns of P-type silicon epitaxially, then grew five microns of n-type silicon epitaxially, um, and then pattern an aluminum contact and put an AR coating there. Um, you can see the grids if I click the grids on, right? This is the way the grids are. It's assuming that the N region is going to be more do highly doped than the P region. And that you can see this right here. Here are the variables. W was the width. The total width that was the width of the aluminum contact dn is the depth of the n region the depth of the p region the total together is the the thickness of the wafer and you can see here's the the doping concentration and then the oxide thickness s device as you remember simulates what you just drew electrically um, with the light off this code can be a little intense to follow the important thing is is that it reads um, the electrodes I make them wide enough so that the devices have one square centimeter for area all right so no matter if I increase W it'll always scale it uh, properly again that's all automatic And you can see all the, like, um, what are the physics? Fermi, recombination, doping dependence, band gap narrowing, things um, that are more advanced. This is the, the optical part. And here it's the numerical solver. So again, it just ran. In this case, we have a few files with TDR. This is, let's see what this comes up as. So I can look at, let me just zoom in. I can look at electric field, current density, Band gap narrowing, current potential, total current density. All right. Um, I haven't done this, but electron mobility. All right, that's the same. Shockley Reed Hall recombination. All right. So you can get a really good sense of what everything is. But it also gives you a data file for IV. And that would be the node underscore DES PLT. You double click on that. Put the anodes outer voltage to the x-axis. 
the total current to the left axis, and there is a diode curve, which you can take the log. That's where we would extract um, I0 and the ideality factor. And then if we went back to here, this is where we would extract our RS. Now, that's what you would do, but I have a file here that does all of that for you automatically. Then over here, I've, this one has the light on. Same code, except the light is on. And I'm just going to look at this plot. All right, so you can plot it and get a look at what it's doing. But everything is automatically extracted. So look, the current is now negative at zero, right? And the current goes to zero at about, you know, 0.5 volts. So this is the open circuit voltage, the short circuit current. Somewhere in here is the maximum power. Again, that's so you can make a plot right and see what's going on but this code here extracts everything um, this loads in the data file creates a curve and all of this code is basically extracting the uh, I naught or the generation current and the ideality factor and then This is uh, calculates the series resistance, and it's a linear regression written out line by line in tickle code. They don't have a linear regression, so that you don't have to don't touch any of that. Okay, then it reads in the file with light, and it calculates the short circuit current for you, which calculates the open circuit voltage calculates the maximum power the minimum power is actually the same but the uh, the minimum has a negative sign which you need to look up the voltage at which that happens then you solve for the current you just calculate the fill factor and it all pops out so all of that code is done for you so in order to do an experiment let's say we want to study Oh, the thickness of the P region. So if I click here, I can add parameter values. All right, five already exists. So let's try 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. And then just click apply cancel so five has already been done so in order to just run this whole experiment project operations run ah uh, yes sure i want to save it local priority unlimited now yeah i'm not going to click all because i didn't make any changes this node is already done you can see everything in the queue now so the the light greens are in the queue the darker green is kind of like it's next and it will you know create the structure it'll create all the structures and then it'll start simulating light on light off in the proper order now i'm going to pause because they uh after it calculates one just so you get a feel for about how long it should take. But I've maximized the, I have the grids optimized so that things shouldn't take too long. All right, the one with the light takes a little bit longer. So again, I'm just gonna pause it while uh, it calculates through. All right, everything's done. Now, while you were waiting, I just zoomed in with Control plus plus. That way you can see things a little bit better. And we see uh, the ideality factor is close to one. 
I would say there's no trend there. Um, IS does seem to change more, but um, really, I don't, I don't see a major trend. The series resistance does get uh, bigger because as the P region gets bigger, that's that's a resistance, right? And so uh, it's has farther to go if you want to see it we can just click here and now the current has to go all that way so the resistance gets bigger but it is longer so it should be absorbing more light and so we can see that the light short circuit current is increasing and the open circuit voltage is increasing. So then is the P max, the voltage at which the maximum power occurs. Same with the current and the fill factor, although it's getting to be uh, relatively insensitive. But that would be one experiment. Now, if you want to, you can uh, you can just say that's an experiment and just copy it and put it into a, a CSV file, or Excel, not an Excel, but a Google Sheet to save for processing uh, later on in either Python or Excel, whatever you want. Now. Uh, Sometimes, like, yeah, now you really should only be changing one thing at a time. You can make these multi-factor experiments, but they are really hard to understand. So what I would do is to do the next experiment, I would be removing values. So let's say I want to get rid of five. And so that's doing it like that is a little bit annoying by just remove. Oh, no, you can apply. All right, just get rid of what you want. Okay. Now you can delete the whole variable and then add it back in. Um, I'll show you. Okay. But you've got to get it exactly right. Okay. Because if you miss, oops, if you misspell it, right, um, or put it in the wrong place, could could make it, uh, well, if you misspell it, it won't run. Um, and you know what? I might as well just misspell it just to show you. So I'm going to delete the whole thing. Actually, now I'm going to run it without the variable there. It should choke. All right. And why did it choke? Double click. Um, let's see. Error. I don't know. Kind of hard to find it, but it choked because it's not there. So now you just add it back. And you're ready for your next experiment. I've shown you how to access each curve, uh, you know, for a report or whatever, but Really, the experimental values are all coming out here, which are easily cut and pasted. Um, that's pretty much it.